Hello Calc Kids, welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean and in today's lesson we're going to talk about this thing called the integral test for convergence. So what we're doing is we're still testing to see if a series converges or not. This test deals with taking the integral and it's actually really basic and simple so the the actual practice of it is pretty quick and easy but we really only use this test if it's going to be something that's easy to integrate. In other words if we have an integral that looks really complicated we're probably going to use a different test that will be talking about here in unit 10. So what, make sure you get this written down here, the uh, this series here, and then this function, the integral of this function. Basically, we have three things going on that we have to test first. Before we can use the integral test for convergence, the function has to be positive, it has to be continuous, and it has to be decreasing. Those three things have to happen for uh, for this integral test for convergence to work out. So what I have here is we're going to test this series for convergence. But if we don't know how to, what we can do instead is test this integral. So from going from k to infinity, some constant to infinity, we do the same constant to infinity. And instead of a of n, we just consider a of n a function. So whatever is written here, we just put the same thing right here. But we think of it as a function of x. And as long as it's positive, continuous, and decreasing, we can figure out if this thing goes to a number. So if we, we take the integral and, and evaluate, evaluate it from k to infinity, and if it converges to a number, then this thing converges. If this thing goes off to infinity, then it's diverging, and so therefore this series is also diverging. So uh, you'll see here, I'm going to do some exam just a couple examples here at the end of the video, but I'm sure first going to show you a proof. So if you don't have this written down, uh, get it written down, pause and finish it up, and then let's get into the proof of this. Now a lot of times when we do proofs, we really like to understand the proof because that tells us exactly why the thing works. And sometimes when I'm working with students, you know, do we do do we have to know the proof in order to just use it? Well, not necessarily, but it helps us to have a better foundation. But I have seen several different types of questions on AP tests where the proof of this integral test matters if you understand the proof of it or not. And so that's why we're going to go through it. And to set us up, I've already created a function. This is just an exponential decay function that's decreasing, but it's always positive, it's always continuous, and then it's always decreasing. So it fits those three criteria that I talked about here on this slide, positive, continuous, decreasing. Now I'm going to be writing a little bit smaller than I usually do in my videos just to fit everything in so my, my pen width is a little bit smaller. Hopefully you can see it okay. So this I'm going to call 1, 2, dot, 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 as if I'm going on forever and ever and ever. And this I'll call a capital N. And this will be a capital N plus 1. All right, so I'm going from 1, 2, all the way up to N, and then N plus 1, wherever that is. So then that means on this one it's going to be the same thing. This is a 1, this is a 2 dot, 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 all the way up until I get to this capital N and this capital N plus one. So that means this value here is our A sub one, or in other words, our F of one. Go back to this and see here, A of N is gonna equal our F of X. So this is like our function. So the very first term, if we have look at the first term, it's going to be the Y value of the graph. This point right here would be A sub two, this point would be something after 2, but before n. And then this one would be our a sub n, sub n like that. Okay, and this point I'm not going to worry about because it keeps, it's not part of the, the grid here. So what do we have? If I were to take the series starting at n equals 1, and then we're going to go off until we get to n. So what's that series doing? We're doing the series of a sub n. So we're taking the number one, the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, up until the nth term. So if we do that, then what's the area we're getting? The area is each of these, it, because these are uh, these are just one unit in width, and the height is your, your first term. So that's every single one of these little rectangles. Well, that is going to end up being, if you think about this, this is an overestimate. Right here, this rectangle, this rectangle, this little rectangle, this little rectangle, those are all overestimates of the actual integral from 1 to n plus 1 of the function. So let me make sure you understand what I just did. This is the rectangular approximation method, the left rectangular approximation method. It's a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, up to a n, a sub n. That's the height of all of these rectangles. Well, a sub n goes off. You have to think about this. This is the height of the rectangle that follows it. And so that's why my integral, integral goes from 1 to n plus 1. So there is my statement of this, this series has to be smaller than the actual integral of the area. 
Okay, so now we're gonna do something similar to that, but this time we're gonna take a right rectangular approximation. So notice here, this value there, let's change colors, that value there is my a sub two. This value there would be my a sub three, a sub four, and so forth, until we get to a sub n, and then the last one is a sub n plus one. So now let's set up our series. So we're going to take our series and we're gonna start at, this time, n equals two. We're not starting at a, a sub one, we're starting at a sub two, because, remember, this area right here, this rectangle, the height of it is the second term. So we're gonna start at two, and we go off until, where does it stop? Here, here, here. Well, it's gonna go all the way to n plus one, right? So I should be able to write that down, that it's n plus one. And then uh, this is of a sub n. Now this, would represent a underestimate, because all of this is missing, right? This stuff's missing, missing. This is an underestimate, so that's less than or equal to. Okay, sorry, let me fix this. That was supposed to be greater than or equal to. Okay, sorry about that, okay. So this, because it's an overestimate, it's larger than. What we have less than or equal to, we have the integral from, and it started at one, right? Because we're doing it from here. So the area is from one all the way up until we get to this, n plus one, I guess, right? All the way up to that one. And that's of the function f of x with respect to x. Okay, now we're going to do something kind of strange with this. I'm going to add, I'm gonna add something here. So I just start it to realize what I'm doing. I'm adding a sub one to both sides of this inequality. When I add a sub one to this side, it just means I, I'm adding on this thing here. So I'm going to start, my new series would start at n equals one from n plus one, uh, and then a sub n. And so that has to be less than or equal to, and again, so if I'm just adding a sub one to both sides, I now have, so I have the same thing, but I'm adding some constant to it. In this case, the constant would be a sub one. Now we can put this all together. What we're going to do is that we're going to say that we're going to have n approach infinity as n approaches infinity, this is the statement we get. So that means this thing is going to infinity, this is going to infinity, this is going to infinity, that is going to infinity, and that is going to infinity. n plus one or n all goes to infinity. So we can now say, what's the smallest thing out here? This thing is smaller than that series. So I'm gonna start with this one. The integral from one to infinity of my function is going to be smaller than this series here, which is the series of n equals one to infinity of a sub n. Okay, so now that's just the same thing as this, right? From one to infinity of a sub n. So that is equivalent, I've already written that. And then that has to be smaller than or equal to the integral from one to infinity of f of x plus some constant. So what do we have here? We have the proof that if we have an integral from and goes from one to infinity, that has to be smaller than the series, which is also smaller than the same exact uh, integral plus some constant. Okay, so the, the series has to be in between these two things. The reason that's important is because if I find a specific number that this evaluates to, that means this series converges, and this one also converges because you're just adding a constant, then that means the series in the middle must converge. This thing, that's what leads us back to our opening statement that if both of these things either have to both converge or they both diverge. This is the proof of that. So if this goes to a number, then this one also would go to a number, which means this one has to go to a number. If this diverges, goes off to infinity, means this one would also go off to infinity because of the plus constant. That means the thing in the middle has to go off to infinity and it would diverge. Okay, so all of that for the proof. Now let's actually do just a couple quick examples and you'll see how easy this really is. Now you might have to apply your different, your different uh, skill sets of how to take the integral of various different things. All right, so before we do that, we have to check the conditions. Is it positive? Is it continuous? And is it decreasing? If you're not sure, you might have to grab the graph of it and look at your calculator real quick just to verify that these, th these three things are happening. So here I pulled up the graph real quick just so you can see what's going on. And yes, it is it's positive, it's decreasing, and it is continuous. Let's set up our integral. So we're going to take the limit as b approaches infinity. Where the heck did I get this b thing from? I'll show you here. As we're going to go from 
2 up to in not infinity. That's the whole point of writing a b. Up to b. So we're going to say b is going to approach infinity. So from 2 to b. And then we're going to use u substitution on this. So I'm going to come over here and just do u substitution real quick. I'm going to say u equals natural log of n. Therefore, du would equal 1 over n dn. Therefore, n times du is equal to dn. Okay, that helps me clean this up a little bit because then uh, this thing becomes a u. No, no, no. Yeah, that becomes a u. So I have 1 over u. And that n is going to cancel with this n, right? Because that whole thing is going to go right here. So it's n du, but the n will cancel with that n. All right, so now we take the limit, the, the integral. I'm going to get the limit as b approaches infinity of, and now the integral of this is just the natural log of u, but u is, what is u? u equals natural log of n. So natural log of n, and then that is, so natural log of natural log, and then that is, uh, what are we doing? That is from 2 to b. All right, so let's now plug in. I know this gets tedious. The limit as b approaches infinity of, we're doing the natural log of the natural log of b minus the natural log of the natural log of 2. Now we go ahead and do the limit. b is going to approach infinity. So what we get here is the natural log of infinity the natural log of the natural log of infinity. Well, that whole thing is still going to approach infinity. Even if though you're taking the natural log of infinity, it slows it down, but still goes to infinity. And then minus this uh, interesting constant of natural log of the natural log of two. Well, that's still, you have infinity minus constant, you're still gonna have infinity, right? So then this whole thing is diverging. So we say diverges. Now what diverges? The integral diverged. Well, if the integral diverged, that by the integral test, it proves that the series diverges. So woo, that thing right there. The series must also diverge. All right, let's do another one. So this, let's set up. We, let's test it first. So we want to test the three things. Is it positive? Is it continuous? And is it decreasing? Those three things. So there's the graph of it. And if we're starting at the number one and we go off to infinity, yes, those, th those, things are, those three things are correct. They're all happening. So we'll set up our integral, the limit, as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b, and then I'm taking it n negative 2 dn. All right, integrate, you get negative 1 over n, and we're evaluating that from 1 to b. So the b gets plugged in first, let's do the limit, and then subtract a negative 1 over 1, there's the 1 plugged in, and then that just basically then equals this part of it as b approaches infinity, that whole thing is 0 plus 1, so that equals 1. Therefore, since this equals 1, it converges. Now, what does that mean? That means the series also converges. The integral converged to the number 1. That does not mean the series converges to the number 1. Make sure you understand that. It just means the series converges. It does not converge necessarily, necessarily to the same number as the integral. They just both converge. Okay, so we are done. Let me just point out a couple real quick things on this. I'm gonna draw a graph that starts going up, turns around, comes down, and then it is going to be decreasing forever like that, slowly going off. All right, so sometimes you will have an integral or a series that maybe starts right here, and uh, like that's your k equals one. So I just wanted to point out that if you say that n equals one, and you're going off to infinity, does the integral test apply on this one? Because remember, it has to be positive, continuous, and decreasing, and this is the problem, because it's increasing right here. Well, the integral test, what it really is, is as long as you get to a point where from then on, as you go off to infinity, so as you approach infinity, if it is then decreasing, positive and continuous, then the integral test will still work. So even if where you start, it was positive or even maybe negative, excuse me, it was negative and then increasing, the integral test can still work if at some point it turns around and it is from there on going to be positive, continuous, and decreasing. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. In the practice, you're just going to see some things that we've already covered. So you'll have to identify geometric series. You'll have to still remember the nth term test. And now we're throwing in the integral test. So we're just going to keep doing a little bit more eat with each of the lessons as we continue on. All right, rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next lesson.